Excuse me, stranger. Are you, by any chance, a visiting Skyfarer? A captain. Even better. Were you the one that just came in on that crappy old spatchcock engine? Excellent. That means that you are no one of consequence. So uh, they should let you leave again. Most probably. Oh, don't look so insulted, Captain. Please, listen to what I have to say. I have a proposition for you. One that might prove very profitable for the both of us. That caught your attention, didn't it? You are in need of coin, then? Good. I do believe we can help each other. Please, have a seat, and I'll pour you some wine. And let's keep our voices down. It would be best, I think. If we kept this conversation private. So, tell me, Captain, do people still talk about Perjurans? When I was first brought here, it was relatively new, and all of London was a bus with rumours. According to the papers, Perjurans was where the most beautiful of London's youth were conserved like jewels in a glass cage. (laughs) They certainly knew how to put a nice spin on it. I suppose they also tell you that we do not age. That one is true, but only because we live the same day over and over again. We are never allowed to progress in our lives, and while we are stuck in a time loop, our family and loved ones are growing old in the world outside. Did you honestly believe that this was a house of leisure, where the nobility comes to party? And those who have been of great service to the crown can rest on their laurels? No, Captain. This is a prison. Everyone here is here because her renewed majesty wanted them out of the way. But they were too high up to simply be arrested. Hence, the questionable reward of being sent to perjurance. Captain, you've got to get me out of here. I don't belong here. I don't deserve to be here. I will make it worth your while. I swear it. I see you still need some convincing. How about this? 
I'll tell you all about what our days here are like. And then, you can judge for yourself. Our days start here, in the parlour of dawn and dusk. The dim light you can see through the shutters simulates both morning and evening, but like everything else in here, it's fake. In the parlour, we wait. While the hour looms rewind our one perfect day. We are only here for a short time. When the hour looms are done, one of the duchesses rings a bell and a panel of wallpaper swings aside. There is a passage behind it, and we all line up to go through. First, duchesses, then debutantes, then chaperones, then visitors, and lastly, servants. You are almost at the bottom of the pecking order, Captain. The passage leads to the morning room. This is where our day truly begins. It is a grander room than the parlour and brighter. The morning room is the most peaceful of the rooms. If rest is to be had at all, you're most likely to find it here. In the morning room, we drink tea and chat quietly and write letters. Letters that will be given to the chaperones and, uh, never sent anywhere, I presume. At least we never get any answers. Many of us have given up on the letter writing by now anyway. And all too soon, the bell rings and we line up again to proceed to the next room. I suppose I should tell you about the passages as well. They are narrow, dark and twisting. They creak and groan, and you can hear the great factory humming and pulsating below your feet. Passing through can make you dizzy and nauseous. I suspect it's because there might be some unraveled time close by. Messing around with time has never been safe or healthy, no matter how much the Ministry tries to convince you that it has mastered time manipulation. I find it safest to stay close to the other debutantes as I pass through the passages. They're always shouting and giggling, while time is spun all around us. We look at each other and laugh and tell the same jokes we always tell, so we don't have to see or hear too much 
of our surroundings. But the stifling darkness around us twists and concoils. And no matter how loud we are, we can still hear the shriek of ours being spun and spun in the factory below. And if you dare to look away from your companions, you will see shapes in the dark, dressed in black, with featureless obsidian faces. And then we emerge, shaken and worn, into afternoon. Afternoon is spent in the dining room. It has a long, luxurious table, and with a decadent abundance of dishes already set when we arrive. In the dining room, the shutters are open, and you can see the brilliance of the clockwork sun. We stay here for quite a while, gorging ourselves, almost to bursting. But even the most opulent meal must come to an end. And eventually, the bell rings again. We line up like good little sheep and go through the passage behind the china cabinet. Every evening, we hold the half-light mask in the grand ballroom. Amidst the luxury and opulence of the ballroom, it's like the horrors of the passageway never happened. Vast chandeliers hang from the ceiling, with spidery arms covered in crystal drops. There's music, Conversation and dancing. The windows are blacked out to simulate night. There's an endless supply of dark wine in crystal decanters. And so we dance and laugh and drink even more, dressed in our shimmering finery. At last, the music stops and we hear the familiar mechanical rumble once again. One of the blackened windows opens up to reveal yet another dark passage. And once we have passed through it, we enter the parlor again, sore-footed from dancing and stumbling through the dark. This room is an in-between state. Here we simply wait for our one perfect day to be rewinded so it can start again. This is also the only room where visitors from the outside can approach the butler and ask his permission to join us for one of our days. And it holds the only exit I know of. We never sleep, you know. I miss sleeping. We never even get a moment of privacy. 
Here, in the parlor, we ready ourselves to start our day anew. For tonight, and every night, we hold the half-light mask. We can never again move forward through time, never find rest, and never experience anything new. This place takes our future from us, and ultimately our minds. Listen, Captain, I have no money left. My accounts have all been closed, I'm sure. But if you take me with you, I can tell you a few secrets. Very profitable secrets. You still seem hesitant. Are you perhaps charmed by the bright colors? The laughing people? The jewelry and expensive dresses? Do you not understand the nature of this place now? If I were you, this parlor is the furthest I would ever go into perdurance. Please, take me with you, Captain. The bell is about to chime for a new day, as everyone is busy lining up to pass through the passage, we can slip away. I will throw my fancy hat under the table and ruffle my clothes. Lend me your cape, and I'll blend in among your crew over there. Now, hurry, Captain. Let's go.